of jobs creation in areas of agriculture. Rice Growing Rice Producers Association of Nigeria, Rice Fund, Rice Farmers Association of Nigeria, made the open claim, and nobody has challenged them as to, up to the time that we speak, that they had created 12 million new jobs. When he finished addressing the federal cabinet last week, the government asked the DG of the NBS, go out there and tell the Nigerian public, you are just saying to us now that Jigawa Zamfara, I, I mean, Kebbi and Eboyi are reporting the, the, the lowest unemployment rates in the country on account of agriculture. So the point is that I think that it is the, the data collected on the basis of which some of the judgments have been passed that are misleading. And I think that there is now a convergence. The data had been unfair to the administration. They, they had ignored job creation in the areas of agriculture. And now that is being integrated. And the Nigerians would be impressed. If you're talking about loss, uh, job losses, no. We have created at least 12 million new jobs in the area of agriculture. Get back to... Mr. Schreiber, Mr. Schreiber, when you spoke earlier, you mentioned something about the last time Nigeria was in recession was in 1991. But in 2013, the former Minister of Finance warned about Nigeria's economy being, being in danger. Did you, do you remember that? Very well, thank you. But before I even take, yeah, but before I even take a look at that, let me respond to some... To some um, uh, comments from my colleague here, Garbashew, and I want to tell him clearly that um, for saying that the president had to wait, Mr. President had to wait for handover notes from his predecessor before he could form a cabinet, uh, goes to show another form of admittance um, of lack of preparedness for the office of president and for the onerous responsibility of managing a country like Nigeria. You know, for, 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 for an office you thought election to over three to four times, obviously you should identify. You should be able to identify eggheads who would help you manage the country. He didn't need to wait for the handing, handing over notes before he would be able to form a cabinet because before then he should be prepared. He should have a working plan. He had no working plan. He, he was practically what maybe El Rufai would refer to as an accidental public servant or an accidental president. But by and large, I take it again, to the issue of um, the statistics is really now. Those statistics, as far as I'm concerned, are vituperations of zero consequence because the president himself, the man we mandated to manage the economy, has admitted that, look, this economy is in bad shape. He didn't say our economy is going to be in bad shape. This is basic grammar. Maybe I'll recommend Brighter Grammar's book one, two, three for them to understand what we're talking about because I don't understand. A man, a man says our economy is in bad shape not our economy will be in bad shape. And we are here sitting here to discuss the confession of a president of my country, voted into power, elected to manage my economy, and we're here to discuss that. No, sir, it's impossible. Nigerians cannot buy that, those outlandish uh, positions or afterthoughts. The issue is simple, it is clear. For the issue of, for, for mentioning <laughs> um, the, the, the National Bureau of Statistics, and, and the new figures, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. You told me, you told me you're going to give me two minutes, and I don't enjoy, let, let us have a balance here. Let's have a balance. Don't interject me. Now, I put it to you. The National Bureau of Statistics, as claimed by the spokesman to the president, at the Federal Executive Council came to, 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 allude, to, to say, to, according to him, to say that, oh, we, we miscalculated. That's, a gov that's an agency funded wholly by government. It is not, it's not an agency sponsored by any, any international organization. They have forgotten, too, that you see, this is not 1984. This is 2018. 2015 to 2018, the world has gone digital. But because they are, not, they are, they are operating an analog system of government, they don't know that even an, a 15-year-old, a 10-year-old, can use the internet to find out what's happening in his or her economy. When the National Bureau of Statistics came out with those, the, those figures about loss of jobs and... And, and how it was affecting our economy, especially loss of jobs by the majority of the Nigerian youths, nobody came out from the government to defend their position. But just the same way the certificate issue was managed, they, have, they ambushed the, 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 the DG of the National Bureau of Statistics to the, to, to, to the villa, and, to, and, 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 and obviously, Dr. Wade, they, they needed to say, you cannot say that a, a government that is in power, the DG of the National Bureau of Statistics, real that figures of unemployment, you did nothing to him, 
many months after, and because election is here, on the eve of election, he is summoned to the Federal Executive Council to generate and manufacture new figures. That is, that is a fallacious tale. That is an affront on our sensibilities as a people of Nigeria. And they should apologize to us so that at least they can get a soft landing when they leave office, when they are voted out of power in 2019. All right. Thank you. Mr. Sheo, can you respond to him? <laughs> well, I, I will begin by thanking him for the lessons in grammar because uh, he has just uh, finished telling us that uh, we, we don't understand the English language. And I remember he runs a column in newspapers, uh, very controversial columns, which, uh, which also some have said they have not been, they don't have integrity of their own, but that's a different matter for, <laughs> for, for uh, 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 another day. Yes, but uh, you know, the, the thing about raising one's voice to shout and make claims, it's not, it's not the best argument that anybody can make in, in the circumstance. The DG of, in any case, the institution of the NBS is fortified by the constitution, is an independent agency of government. And it may interest him to also know that actually the sitting DG as it is now was appointed, was put in place by PDP. And the, the pres done, yeah, and President Muhammad Buhari had the grace to renew his appointment because he found that he has credibility and is doing a good job on, 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 on the seat. And, and so therefore, you cannot now begin to say that uh, the man is compromised or that he is not uh, standing up to you know, what, what it takes to run the office. <laughs> you people put him there. So you should please uh, understand that. <laughs> Garba. Mm. Uh, Mr. Schreiber, Garba, let me let me put it. Mr. Schreiber, you. hold on, Mr. Schreiber. You said earlier that we were trying to interrupt you. Nobody was trying to interrupt you. It was Mr. Shill who was making at some of your comments. Well, I asked a question earlier about what you said concerning the recession that Nigeria was in and just came out of. You said it began the last time was in 1991. You said you're going to respond to that, but you did not. When I said the former Minister of Finance mentioned in 2013 that the economy was in danger. Let's take it up from that point. Yes. Yes, the finance minister gave the warning. And the president at that time and his cabinet adjusted immediately. And the government never, that government never went into recession. I remember vividly, and you can, you, based on statistics, you know too that the, the economic growth index, as at that time, under Jonathan, as at the time he handed over to Buhari, was 4.7%, the growth index. But today, under Buhari, 0.16%. So what are we talking about? He gave, the finance minister in 2013 gave a warning. But the economy never went into recession. It went into recession under this administration. So you see, the issue is about capacity. The issue is about knowledge. You know, my good friend, uh, Sheo Garba, was talking about, about, gram, um, about my, my columns in grammar and all that. But that is even an issue for another day. It's a matter of conjecture. It's a matter of what you, what you want to know and what you want to talk about. Because he too, Sheo Garba, a spokesman to my, to my boss, um, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, was never a stammerer. He is a, a fantastic editor, brilliant young man. But today he stammers and stutters because he's, he's reeling out lies and manufacturing figures. So he knows what we're talking about. The confidence is not there, so you have to stutter. Anyway, that's an, that's an issue for another day. As I said, and I'll keep saying, and Nigerians are aware, the economy has failed as confessed by the president. The issue we should discuss in this studio is how do we move forward? Where do we go from here? Because the man we elected and gave responsibility to manage the economy has said it has failed. Everybody is aware it has failed. The people are hungry. You mentioned the, the, the over 12 million job losses by our teaming youth. So where do we go from here? That should be the issue. It shouldn't be to discuss the Nigerian economy where we now give room for people to begin to manufacture figures and bandy figures. No, sir. That shouldn't be it. What we should look at now is how do we get the, the, the Nigerian economy working again? How do we get Nigeria to work again? And that is where the article plan comes in. That is where we have an alternative. That's where we have a man who's managed businesses who, that are very successful. That's where we have a man who has got a quality team to move the economy of Nigeria to the next level not a man who runs a government by proxy, according to his wife. You are, Nigerians are aware. Not a man who runs a government that is anchored by hyenas and jackals. 
We need a man who understands the working of the economy. Mr. We Shribal, need a man who Mr. knows Shribal, how to run the economy. If I may come in here, let, let's just finish, uh, stay with you before we go on a quick break. The, you said something about the growth rate of 4.8 or thereabouts. Well, the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics put the growth rate year on year as a 2014 at 6.21%. But within that same period, the governors at that time were accusing your government or the PDP government at that time of stealing. And that's why they were demanding that the revenue in the excess crude account should be shared. How do you react to that? You are, you are, you are forgotten to, you are forgotten to that at some point, at that point in 2016, or in, in uh, 2015, I was, um, I was a consultant to Rotimi Amechi, who is now Minister of Transportation in this government. And um, um, that was in River State. So fundamentally, a majority of those in this government today are members of the People's Democratic Party. They were in that government. They know what we're talking about. They demanded for, for those monies. What did they do with them? The records are there. What did they do with those monies when they, when they, when, when they were redistributed to the states at that point? But was the there, question is not in there, a change in this government. Just clarify, the was there any look stealing? Look at the of corruption in the subsidy. Oh, you wake up, you say, no, we're not going to pay. We're not going to pay subsidy. We're not going to pay one naira as subsidy. Meanwhile, what is happening in this government is what we call under recovery. Mere semantics. All they did is just to manipulate Nigerians, manipulate the minds of Nigerians by what they, call, what they term as under-recovery. Okay, Mr. So Shribo, we need to go on a quick break here. We'll come back and continue the conversation. Please don't go away.